the Solution Series, brought to you by Double Radius and hosted by yours truly, Jeff Holdenred. With the introduction of Teragraph and all the 60 gig products out there, there have been a lot of questions about where did this come from? Where is it going? Uh, you know, what exactly is it? And uh, today we have the honor to uh, actually have a couple guests here that we can uh, answer some of those questions. So, uh, guys, would you mind introducing yourselves? Sure, I'll start. I'm David Buerta. Um, and I'm a strategic partner manager at Meta Connectivity. I'm Alex Dorden. I'm the VP and GM of Ciclo Americas. Thank you for that. So let's start off with, you know, let's start from the beginning. So David, could you um, kind of tell us kind of what prompted Meta to, to get started with Terragraph and where did it all come from? Sure. Uh, we basically uh, realized that, you know, it's expensive to... Uh, um, bring high speed connectivity in the last mile, you know, using traditional options such as uh, buried fiber. Uh, it's expensive. It takes a long time to deploy. You know, there must be uh, a better alternative or, you know, that's really what we set to work solve using wireless technology. Uh, and, you know, in doing so, we took stock of all the available spectrum possibilities. 60 gigahertz became uh, very quickly interesting for a variety of reasons. Uh, and we basically went from the ground up there developing this um, specification, if you will, uh, that we now call Terragraph. Perfect. So can you get into some of the benefits of what you get from a Terragraph solution? So Terragraph uh, offers a, a number of benefits. Um, I would say the two main that, you know, pop to the top of the list are, you know, it's it's a, a far less costly um, means of delivering gigabit per second class connectivity to a subscriber premise. And the second major benefit is the time to market. It's incredibly quick to deploy, again, compared to buried fiber. Um, you know, and then you can break down a number of, of specific benefits if you look at it in the context of as wireless technologies go, you know, what does Terragraph bring to the table? 60 gigahertz is very interesting. Uh, it's it's very uh, widely available, uh, often license free worldwide. So it's you know that again feeds into the low cost aspect of things. Um, it's also great, even though it's unlicensed. You know its propagation characteristics, often viewed as a challenge for the technology, are actually a a big benefit in terms of uh, interference. Uh, you know when you have a Terragraph deployment, that's a fairly clean piece of spectrum to operate in. Um, and then, you know, the, the, some of the attributes of the technology itself, like it, the ability to mesh and deploy on street furniture, you know, make it quite a flexible uh, technology to, to deploy and solve last mile connectivity problems. You think like the size of the channels uh, being as big as they are, you know, being able to offer those kind of speeds that, the, that 60 gig offers also, correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's not just that the spectrum is available and, and you know, often free to use, but there's a massive amount of it. So you can deploy, you know, huge channels and, and pump a lot of data through that spectrum. So um, I don't know if this is a meta question or a cyclu question, but do you feel that Terragraph has taken off as expected? Let me defer to Alex first as a partner. I would love to hear his view, and I can share the, the meta perspective on that as well. Sure. Yeah, thank, thanks, Dave. And uh, yeah, Jeff, to answer that question, uh, you know, so Cicli, we launched uh, Terragraph in, uh, in 2021 uh, and, uh, you know, globally, not, not, just, not just in the US. And, uh, you know, we've been very happy with, with the products. Um, it's, you know, still, um, uh, it's a growing, developing, you know, technology solution. You know, as we're we're launching new new products, new software, etc. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been very successful. We we've deployed a number of different applications. You know, it's giving you some examples of of where we use it. We use in digital divide type, uh, you know, um, uh, projects uh, where it's been used to provide uh, internet connectivity for you know for low income. Um, I mean, obviously, it's been a huge thing during COVID, right? People. You know, working uh, from home, sitting from home, etc. In, in in a way, the the launch, you know, couldn't be time better in a way, right? With during COVID, where there was such a huge increase in demand for uh, for you know broadband connectivity, um, particularly those who don't currently have it. So you know, I, I think what Dave was saying, you know, it really addressed that uh, significant problem. You know, so uh, but but also we're we're finding new new opportunities new applications to as well outside of even just internet for example we're starting to use it in uh, smart city deployments 
you know, for connecting cameras, for example, in, in, in a city, um, even not just in a city, you know, other, other, uh, other applications as well, all Wi-Fi access points, so public Wi-Fi perhaps, you know, um, so that's another, another pretty, pretty big one. So a, a lot of different applications where, you know, again, solving that last mile where there isn't fiber, you know, deploying fiber can be, you know, buried fiber can be very expensive, very time consuming. It's actually got worse during COVID. Because of now, you know, supply chain crisis, you know, just um, is this, you know, it's just really bad everywhere. Uh, so this is a technology which is, you know, Dave said as well, very quick, very easy to deploy. So uh, it's going really, really well. I mean, you know, we're extremely happy with uh, with uh, how things are going with with the, the products. Dave, you want to add to that at all from a meta perspective? Yeah, definitely. I I would you know echo that it's been a very positive uh, um, experience for us and, and indeed the, the uh, traction and interest we've seen in Terragraph has exceeded our expectations. So, um, you know, it's been, uh, uh, I guess, positive relative to our objectives. It is also early days, as Alex pointed out, you know, I think it's probably we can say it's just under a year now that commercial solutions have become available. So still not quite a full year of, of availability. Um, and given the, you know, given that time frame, the the number of deployments, trials, uh, early engagements we've seen has been fantastic. Um, one of the things that we've done as Meta is, you know, we've got behind our partners like Siglu uh, in a number of opportunities where uh, a collaboration has made sense. Right, our teams helping the the Siglu teams to go and sell, deploy, um, you know, and work with the service provider to get the get the solution to market. Um, and through that experience, you know, we've we've noted, uh, well, it's been quite a bit to keep up with, which is a good problem to have. So a very positive experience in the first year. So let's move on a little further. Um, so what do you see is the, like the biggest barrier to have broadband everywhere? Like, where, where do you see those problems right now? Yeah, we I mean, obviously, we look at that problem very uh, deeply within the, the meta connectivity uh, group. Um, you know, I think the the one that Terragraph uh, specifically addresses, and there are a few cuts of it, is a big one. It's affordability, uh, right? And if you bring in uh, an infrastructure option that allows, you know, lower cost connectivity to a broadband subscriber, uh, it's directly addressing that problem. So, um, you know, th there's multiple other barriers and different programs we have that tackle those, but, you know, affordability is certainly a key one that Terragraph tackles. Spot on. So now let's go to the, the million dollar question, right? If you could pull out your crystal ball and see where Terragraph's gonna go, where's it gonna be in five years, three years, 18 months, you know, the end of the year, where do you see this going or where do you think it will end up? I'll, I'll give the, the, the meta dream <laughs> answer and, and, then, and then turn to Alex, maybe he can talk a bit more about Siklu's vision, but, um, you know, we, we um, as we mentioned, right, it's still in the fairly early stages of Terragraph go to market. It's right just under a year of commercial availability. So in the next, say, two to we expect that, you know, hockey stick uh, growth to continue. We, we're just seeing the beginning of, of the journey now. So expect to see, you know, lots more deployments, uh, full full adoption. A lot of the the first uh, you know deployments are service providers getting their hands on on the technology for the first time, uh, and and you know the, the nice thing is there's been a lot of positive uh, output from these early projects that should lead to subsequent uh, adoption and deployment, which you know I think we'll see in the next two to three years that really scaling up. Um, you know, looking at our uh, at our OEM partners like Siklu, you know, I believe there's already been uh, earlier today, you know, the the announcement of of another product uh, SKU for Terragraph. So expect to see more variations and SKUs come to market. It's quite a flexible technology in terms of how it can be packaged and and brought to market in different form factors and configurations. So I think as you know, as uh, um, companies like Siklu gain further experience and see how companies or service providers are deploying it, uh, you know, you'll see products come to market that really address the biggest opportunities coming through from, from that experience. Uh, and we expect to see expansion of the use cases that it's serving, right? Obviously, we care about people connectivity at Meta, but, you know, certainly there's physical security, uh, 
you know, smart city type deployments, lots of other use cases, which, you know, I think you'll see Terragraph, uh, uh, you know, be adopted in, in, in good scale. Alex, I don't know if you have a, a different perspective to add there. No, I, 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 agree, I agree with you, Dave. As you said, it, it's, it's still, you know, fairly early days. Uh, I mean, you know, in terms of the numbers, you know, uh, if you look at it from a kind of very high, very high level, um, you know, all the ecosystem partners, you know, Ciclo plus, you know, the others as well. I, I know we've all been doing uh, proof of concepts, you know, uh, over the last, you know, 10 to 12 months or something like that. And, you know, I mean, proof of concepts, some of them are, you know, a few hundred, you know, deployments, so reasonably large proof of concepts. And, and I think, over the next 12 to 24 months, you know, a lot of these are going to really start rolling out. You know, the, the, the technology has kind of proved itself. You know, it's proved that it, that it works. It's reliable. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to deploy all the things that, you know, that Meta and, and the ecosystem partners of Meta have promised, you know. And I think now it's, it's going to start getting traction. You know, people are going to say, yeah, this works, you know, because, you know, in the past, you know, we all know some people have been burnt, you know, by by wireless or other technologies that doesn't, you know, doesn't actually do what it says on the packaging, you know. Uh, I think I think this one, it really does show it, it does. Obviously, we've got Meta behind it, you know, where how, you know, you can't really get any more a larger company than that, right, tracking this technology, you know. Uh, but but I, th I think the other thing as well, the, the fact that Meta has, a, a, you know, a number of ecosystem partners behind this, right, there's Ciclo plus others. So it's, you know, also created competition, which is very healthy. Because it, it encourages development and product, um, um, you know, enhancements and driving the cost down, driving the price down, which is all good for the market, for the consumer, you know. So, uh, you know, obviously, it makes us stay and keep on our toes, so to speak, you know, because we have to make sure we're uh, we we stay ahead of the of the competition as much as possible. Um, so, I think that's really really good as well. Plus, I think from from a global perspective, you know, obviously, we we're doing a lot of deployments. Uh, within the US, but but I think as well as this starts getting deployed, as you know, in other parts of the world, we're you know looking at it. We've done a few deployments already in in Latin America, Central America, Latin America, even you know APAC, Europe. You know, once I think this uh, gets um, adopted in you know places like India and and even even countries where perhaps you know uh, parts of Southeast Asia where they've got very poor infrastructure, they've got very little fiber, they still have the same problem. I mean, that's just going to explode. You know, it really is going to absolutely explode, you know. And, and I think the other thing as well is getting some people, not naming any names, to move away from thinking, oh, it has to be fiber. You can only use fiber. To get gigabit connectivity is fiber or die, you know. It's like, no, you got to, you got to, it's all a bit of a mind shift getting some, some of these supervisors to, you know, think outside the box a little bit and thinking, you know, fiber is not necessarily the be all end or sometimes, you know, it, it, it's not the be all at all because you simply can't deploy it or it's too expensive. So what else is there? Okay, let's have a look, you know, and hey, this technology is available now. It works. Let's use it, you know. So I, I think, you know, once some of those uh, service providers make that, that mind shift change, it again becomes increasingly adopted. So it's niche products like 60 gigas has been pretty much a niche product until now, really until meta took it on board and created product out of it. And now it's becoming more of a, you know, widely accepted product technology. Yeah, it's just going to, you know, it's going to be huge. Yeah. Global regulators as well are, are, are paying attention to it, or at least, you know, we see a, a huge, you know, uh, movement worldwide in the right direction in terms of 60 gigahertz becoming, you know, unlicensed in countries where it was previously restricted. Uh, there's been really good developments on that front over the last year. And I think it will continue, right? And a lot of times the, uh, you know, th those uh, regulatory changes are based on some observations uh, and cases being made, you know, uh, based on trials of Terragraph equipment in country show, to show the regulators what it can actually deliver in terms of connectivity. Perfect, guys. That's a lot of great information. And uh, David, thanks for the uh, the hockey stick reference. Uh, for those of you that know me, you know I'm a huge hockey fan, so I really appreciate it. Oh, that there we one. go. <laughs> um, so, you know, just just going back to it, you know, Terragraph is is something that is is new, as as you learned today, but it is something that's growing rapidly. And there's a lot of awesome applications uh, that you heard some of them today, and uh, we really appreciate. You know, David and Alex being here uh, with us to talk about that. Once again, you know, always reach out to your sales rep at Double Radius. Talk to them about Terragraph. Talk to them about Ciclu. Ask questions. Um, let us educate you 
on the possibilities and, and where you can go with this. Because every day we're seeing more and more applications, more and more use cases. Um, and it is a great, you know, 60 gigahertz is a great solution uh, for fiber like speeds. Um, so thank you for being here. I hope you all learned something. Uh, once again, David, Alex, thanks for being here. We really appreciate your time and your information on this. And we hope to see you on the next one on the solution series. Have a wonderful day.